my whole purpose is helping that little guy, right? And I've helped guys go from nothing, man, to multi-million dollar businesses overnight. And it's either the people that follow what I teach and things that we do are scaling like crazy. I mean, we're talking 10, 20, 30, 40 X year over year. Some of these companies are fucking going crazy. Hey, welcome back to another HVAC Success Secrets Revealed with Thaddeus and Evan, where we have good conversations with good people, and any good conversation worth having is worth having drunk. And shout out to the man in uh, Texas. We got a TX whiskey last time I was in Dallas at the Rocket Ackets event. I bought it. I mean, he's being a traditional liberal and moving from <laughs> California over to Texas. So uh, he's just following suit with the rest of Californians. It's great. Did you, did you see what he held up? Uh, yeah, when, I did. You know, <laughs> <laughs> He's converted. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't take him long. No, definitely not. It's funny. We, uh, I got a text before the show um, asking what we were on uh, to have Victor Rancourt back on the podcast. And again, I just responded with the spectrum. So here we are. And uh, we're going to have ourselves a fantastic episode today. I'm actually really jacked for it. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> literally, when we had our, our guest say he wasn't going to be able to make it today, uh, my immediate response was, do you want to have Victor back on? Because the guy is fucking blowing up right now. Everything that he's touching uh, is just insane. Uh, launched fast response, what, two weeks ago? Announced that he was going to be doing that. Uh, then bought another business, rolled it up into fast response a week ago. And then announced just yesterday that he was uh, partnering with uh, Kevin Fisker over in Arizona. And taking that up and rolling that up into the rocket group. I mean, the guy is going nuts right now. You want to talk about expansion and just being able to accomplish so much in such a little amount of time. He's crushing it. Undoubtedly. And I mean, we just got off of Rocket X a month ago, not even three weeks ago. Although I did like, uh, I did like when he said that uh, that there was going to be no more events, and then like the two days later, hey, we're going to Google in New York. Uh, 100 people, so, uh, <laughs> it's a small one. It's a small it's a one. Small it doesn't one. count. Small one. So, yeah. uh, but let's dive in. Let's get him on the other side. But first, of course, our show would not be possible without our guests, and in no particular particular order, Elite Call Chirp in on purpose media so have you ever thought about opening your database to fill your dispatch boards with lucrative service and sales appointments well and boosting memberships great enter in elite call a us-based call center that does just that for over 20 years they've dedicated their dedicated teams don't just make calls they directly integrate appointments into your crm and fill your dispatch boards don't let your competition get ahead let elite call connect with your customers first visit elitecall.net to learn more and we have chirp uh, transform your home service business with Chirp, the ultimate automation toolbox, capture more leads, connect instantly and skyrocket your sales. Chirp integrates seamlessly into platforms like Service Titan and Housecall Pro, offering automated text, emails, and even ringless voicemails. Boost your Google reviews and customer loyalty with proven rehash programs. Schedule your demo today and get an exclusive 25% off your first three months. Visit chirp.com slash HSSR to start boosting your revenue today. All right. And if you don't have enough at bats to use either Chirp or Elite Call, well, hit up on Purpose Media. They are, we are your go to home service uh, marketing experts for everything web design, SEO, and PPC. We've got stunning user friendly websites. We've got enhanced visibility on Google, effective pay per click ads, minimizing wasted ad spend. So let's turn your online presence into a lead generating powerhouse. Visit onpurposemedia.ca today to start your digital transformation. Dude, well, how the hell did you find the time to join us today? He, you know what? I, when you guys call that, you know, I dropped everything I was doing. I made it happen, man. Obviously, I respect you guys, your show, and you guys have always been, you know, more, more than open and, and always supporting me. So there was no question you needed somebody. I was going to jump right in, man. I mean, it's been chaotic to say the least. I've been out here in Dallas for freaking eight days, and the amount of stuff we've accomplished in eight days is absolutely nuts. But I'm glad I was able to find some time to make this happen. Well, appreciate you Love taking it. some time to, to make it happen. I know it. Uh... Uh, it's always good to have you on and uh, amazing things that you're doing. It's it's fun watching. Yeah, man. So, I mean, thanks for having me on. And, and obviously like this pod, this podcast, I really, you know, talk a lot about what we've done over the last week and then things that we've implemented and, and a bunch of other things that are going on, man. My, my world has been chaotic and, and I didn't really talk about it much, but obviously, you know, my, my game plan was after the event was over with, obviously that takes so much for my team and me and, and everything that goes into making that stuff happen. And it's stressful and tiring. So I'm like, I didn't want to, you know, really go all in. And I knew that after the event, what, I, what my plans were. And, and I didn't really talk about it at the event either, which I probably, I could have talked a little bit about it, but 
uh, you know, I've, I've jumped right back in and man, it's been a, uh, it's been a weird year, man. It's been almost a year since I sold absolute, uh, you know, I went through the depression stage, right? Like when you first sell your business, you're like, fuck, I lost my baby. Uh, and you always think back, like, did I make the right choice and all that stuff? So I went through all the depression stage and then I was like, okay. And I started chasing all these other things that I thought I wanted to do. Uh, but it really came to my realization, you know, at the beginning of this year that like, Hey, I'm, it's like fucking, it's like, it's like Jordan, it's like Michael Jordan retiring early. It doesn't make sense. And you know, one thing that I'm, I, I know that I'm really great at is building businesses and building teams and, and things like that. So I'm just excited to be back, man. If you guys are been, if you're around me right now, you will see you, your, your entire aura would change, man. I just like, I'm just so excited. I got some great, great things going on and I just been blessed and my team's been, my team's been busting ass. So pretty excited to be on here, but just what we've been doing right now, like in the last eight days, like I can't wait you guys to see my YouTube stuff that's coming out, but uh, man, it's, it's freaking insane. So we'll talk a little bit about it, but I'll let you guys ask your questions. Your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, and, and I do want to get into some of that stuff too, but I'd like the right off the hop, man, like the, the, the depression of selling a business and like I haven't sold our business. Um, maybe one day down the road we will, and we'll go through this. And I don't think a lot of people realize some of the dark sides of selling a business and then okay well you wake up you're like well what changed well my bank account's certainly bigger but now i've got nowhere to go and now you start chasing all these shiny objects and things and so so yes in your experience and having went through that if somebody's going to sell that well hey let's let's take this back and let's expose some of this depression side of things the dark side of things and what happened and what you did to overcome it well really let's i mean i'll tie it into you know from the beginning right is, is i started that business at you know 30 years old I uh, never ran a business, never started a business. I, I, my ego at that point was just like fucking through the roof. Um, and that business, I, I put myself in a really, in a really weird position, right? Like I made a lot of really bad business decisions of growing the business. Like anybody that grows a business that's never ran one before. And I, and I grew up really fast and I grew in the public eye, but I also led with ego and all those things. And a lot of the stuff that I did early on in my business really hamstrung what we could really do with the business and what I was even able to do. And, and it got to the point where it scaled so, scaled so big and because I didn't put all, I, because of all the mad mistakes I made in the, in the first three years, like the last couple of years of the business were just super stressful, just really trying to fix those problems. And, and the, the problems that we had built around the business from that beginning were really hard to overcome. And, you know, I never really talk about it much, but like, you know, I made a, I made a really bad acquisition uh, after year two of business, um, you know, spent th th pretty much let $3.2 million on fire. That's just the cost of the business, not the amount of money and time, energy and effort and all the cash that we lost burning that, you know, with that business burn, the turn rate on that business. Uh, so there was something that where like, you know, most people don't really realize, like most people would have gave up through in the towel, filed bankruptcy or whatever. And, you know, I, I pulled through it and I did stuff that I had to do to, to make it happen and, and, and made a lot of decisions that didn't really align with what I really wanted to do. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have to do what you have to do in business. And one thing that, you know, that I've learned, right. I, I, I feel like I've done so much in the last five years. I mean, only been, I, it hasn't even been five years since I ran a business. I started my business. So it's like all those things that I did in that short period of time, like, people don't understand how much that I know. Like I, I've forgotten more stuff about how to operate and grow a business and all the things to do and not to do than most people you will ever know. Um, so it, it was a relief. So when I was going to exit that business, I had put so much debt on the business and stress and all that stuff. And, and I, and I built the business that I really, you know, I knew what I wanted, but I wanted a fresh start anyways. And I wanted to start fresh and, and really do it the way that I wanted to the way that I know now, the way that I teach my clients, like, the stuff I teach in the blueprint is not how I started my business. It's what I've learned of what not to do in my business, right? Um, and all the things that we can implement to grow fast. And, and the, the, it was, it was for me, it was really demoralizing because I'm in Southern California. The weather's shitty. Like it's always sunny, sunny and 75. It's hard. It's already a hard business. I put a bunch of debt on the business and I didn't really put all my processes and procedures in to start my business. But then I started partnering with companies throughout the country where I could implement my processes and all this stuff. And look what happened to them. The, the, you know, Georgia, they went from three to 30 million or, you know, or 26 million in a couple of years. Vegas, we're going to hit 35 million. We literally sold 29 systems the other day at Summit. 29 systems in one fucking day. That business, we but there did $1.9 million in the entire year, 16 months ago. Okay. You know, my other partners in Sacramento and, and Utah and, and the, and the you know, badass guys up in, in Pennsylvania, these guys, you know, we've grown some amazing businesses, but it was frustrating because I know that I'm one of the best or not the best operator in the country. And I promise you, I'm going to prove that. Uh, but I couldn't operate the business that I wanted to because I had already caused so many mistakes and made so many bad choices in the beginning. So that business, when I exited it, it was hard because it was my baby, but it was hard knowing that I fucked up. So I made so many bad decisions to start the business that I was never able to, able, it was so hard for me to recover. So I was like, okay, do I want to keep running uphill full speed all the fucking time? And it was stress all the fucking time. Like it was by now we have to do, we have to crush it every single day to cover debt, you know, our debt costs in the business. And, and so that was very rough. So I, I got to the point where I knew it was time to let go of the business. It was like, why do I want to keep doing this? 
uh, the amount of capital and turn rate to run that business was ast astronomical. I know how much easier it is in every other market. So any operator that tells me, oh, I grew a big business over here, come to California, you'll get smoked. I promise you. Um, so those things, those things have been into effect. So obviously selling the business, it was really hard because those are my, my employees, the people that I've helped grow. And I've taken, you know, I've taken some of my employees from food stamps to making hundreds of thousands a year. I've changed a lot of people's lives over the last five years. And, and it was really hard for me to step, uh, step away from it. So, and then when I did do it, it was like, it felt like, man, am I doing the right thing? But I, I knew for me personally, as my family and, and my stress levels, it was the right thing to do. Cause I have so many other ventures and so many other things that I do. I make so much money doing everything else. Like, why am I here trying to run uphill all the time on a business with debt on it? So uh, that's one thing I definitely learned is keeping debt low. Right. So one of the things that in this business, I'm buying everything cash. I don't want debt on the business. I don't want to buy and borrow and borrow the money. We just want to make sure that we get this thing going the right way. And, you know, now, you know, but, but yeah, those first couple months, man, it was rough. We just hung, I hung out at my the beach house and, you know, I was pretty depressed and you got to know, like last year I went through, you know, separation and all that stuff and, and, and going through all that, you know, with the kids and it was a lot, it was a really, really rough year for me. Right. Um, and, but I, you know, I was still successful. I was still doing the things, but I was going through the motions. I didn't have the fire that I have back in me now. Um, and that's, I think that's what I'm most excited about is that I finally got my, my passion back and my, my excitement. And when you're around me right now, you're I'm telling you your level energy levels are going to turn up. You're going to want to do more than what you're doing right now. And, and that's what I'm really proud of and putting it's a, so many awesome things together, but we'll talk about that. But that depression is real, man. That's your baby. You built it. And, you know, and if I built this beautiful thing and everybody else throughout the country knew my business and I, and I built it off of integrity. We built a great business, great foundation. Um, I mean, we look at the reviews, we're almost a 2000 five-star reviews after, you know, less than five years. It's just, it's insane. We built something special. And so when I sold it, it was like, okay, I lost that. But I thought like all these little businesses that I was partnered in, I thought that was like, really like it was going to be fulfillment, fulfilling for me, but it wasn't, it wasn't, I, I can't pull every string. I can't make the decisions. And I know that if I'm there every day, that that business is going to grow astronomically. And that, that's where I'm at now. This business, I got the opportunity. I am the majority, um, I'm pretty much the majority owner on this business. I can go and build the business that I want to do. And that's what I'm excited about. Hmm. There's a lot of ways uh, that that can go in there. <laughs> yeah, that, it's, it's a lot. You know, and a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know this about my business, and you know, a lot of people don't know like what the shit I was going through, man. Mm -mm. Uh, you know, I went on broad. I went on Bradley's podcast, you know, in 2022, and when I went on that podcast, it talked about 40 million dollars, and this, it got a link to his YouTube, and that YouTube linked to my 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 company website or my company profile. So people would see that. And the people that used to call me in to try to fix it started suing me. So the amount of lawsuits and like all the things that I went through in the last year of that business, like, dude, it, it was brutal. And and I just kept pushing forward because I would rather, I, I was, I'm one of the guys that'll die, die on the style on my sword. Right. And it was, it was hard on my family. It was hard on me. It was hard even on my employees. Cause it was just like, fuck man. It's like, I just kept, felt like I just kept getting kicked when it was like, I'm just trying my best to do really good for everybody. And, and that's kind of what happened there. So uh, I'm well, just, that's the hardest thing as an entrepreneur, though, is to walk away and to know when to walk away and, and to just and, say, like, I'm I'm tired of fighting this fight and I'm doing the best that I can, but it's dude, fucking exhausting. Everybody around me told me to sell it, you know, the year before and, and two years before that. They're like, dude, Vic, you're you're not yourself. 2019, Vic, before I bought, before I acquired, preferred and put all that debt on the business, that was a bad motherfucker, dude. Like that guy, if I would have mm -hmm. never bought that business, I would have been a hundred million dollars within five years. I guarantee it. And that's, that's just a hard reality. You know, every single month I was cutting a check to the SBA for a business I had shut down every month. I'm cutting $40,000 plus all the turn rate and all the other shit that went into going into that business. It was, it was a lot of burn. And it's like, dude, no matter how much you sell, you can't outrun that. And that's, that's kind of what I was dealing with. So the business, when you the business got profitable, it's still, even if it's an EBITDA profitable, you still have to cut that check for the debt, right? Cause that doesn't count against your EBITDA. And so it was, it was just, it was a, it was a weird situation. Um, there's a lot of people that said a lot of things that don't know much about me and don't know my background. Um, but I keep receipts on everything and that's what I'm most excited about. You guys are about to see who the best operator in the country is. Um, did, was it the the sexiness of the M&A that attracted you to making that decision and acquiring that? Because it was something that was happening a lot, 2019, was, 2020, was, 21. I thought everything – at that point, yeah, my first year in business, I went from zero to five million. And then from there, from five to 12 million. And I'm like, everything I touch turns to gold, right? And right. so this business, I, I overpaid for it, you know, and I think, you know, I think Lance uh, – Lance or someone would say, hey, like that business is worth one million. I paid 3.2. Right. But that's what like, you know, there was it was an eight, eight X multiplier on the thing. And I was like, OK, well, that sounds about right. And so I you know I made the decision to do that. But I also didn't know what it what it took to run a business that, that was two hours away. I wasn't I didn't have the, the the managers. I didn't have all the processes in place. Like I, what I have now is not 
even comparable, like not even a fucking same hemisphere as what we had, you know, as we had then. Like I didn't have, I didn't even understand all the nuances at the office. Like I was still just a sales guy. Uh, now I, I can tell you right now, I'm a businessman. That's for damn sure. Um, so it's just, a, it's a whole different experience, man. It, it was, a, it was a bad purchase, but it, it was a three point million dollar education. And at the end of the day, I don't regret it. Uh, yeah, do I wish it never happened? But if it didn't happen, I wouldn't be as gritty and, and how I operate now. I wouldn't think the way that I think. Uh, so it was an education. And I think, you know, there's some of the best and most successful people in the world that got educated and made mistakes and filed bankruptcy and all those things. And I didn't have to file bankruptcy. I, you know, worked my way through it. I had to do some layoffs, re, re, re shift the business. But I can tell you right now, I learned more in those couple of years than, than most people ever learn in their entire life, you know? Well, and, and that kind of hard fucking right. Um, and then almost the other part is is you made the decision on on ego, right? And you said the, the before you led with ego, and you've had to to kind of rein that in and change that. And I think this is a big learning curve for a lot of people, myself included, uh, over the years of of leading with the ego. What was the biggest awakening call that said, "Oh fuck, I got to check my ego"? And how do you? Because that doesn't go away, by the way. That's something yeah, that somebody has I, to constantly think, work on. How do you there, constantly work on check, keeping that at check? There's ego and there's confidence, right? And, mm. and ego it doesn't make doesn't make uh, doesn't make rational decisions, right? And I think I'm very confident. I think I'm that's how I, I come off that way because I really am because I believe in myself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, then who the fuck else is going to believe in you, right? So you got to believe in yourself wholeheartedly, and I do. Like I, you know, I wake up every day and I feel like I'm a bad motherfucker, right? But it's not ego driven anymore. We have to make financial decisions, and you know, I think obviously one of the big things it was like you know Michelle coming into my life and helping me really understand the other side of the business was a very very big impact on my life right and i got to see the other side of it and i got someone that helps me make those those decisions and i got to learn why those decisions are made or why they, why things are done a certain way and so now it's like yeah you got to have confidence like you can't like i'm this is a big leap of faith man i'm i'm moving from my freaking home in california where i spend almost every day on the beach right and i'm out here in dallas and i'm, I'm growing this business and and i'm buying truck we're buying trucks and we're building this training center we're hiring these people and i have to really believe in myself to you know have ask people to quit their careers and come work for me and trust me when i got nothing here man there's this it's a fucking tin roof like that's it and i i have to sell people on that vision if you don't believe in it they're gonna, they're not gonna believe in your shit either like but i tell you right now the interviews i did this week they walked in they're like dude i don't give a fuck what we want to be part of this right because that's how that's how confident i am that we're going to succeed mm. <clears throat> you had a, a quote from helen keller that you put on there this morning um she's also someone that talks a lot about vision and i remember listening to a, a some sort of podcast or something like that where they were talking about helen keller and someone some jackass stood up in the audience was like, Helen was, uh, was looting, losing your eyesight, the worst thing that ever happened to you. And she said, no, losing my vision was right. When you lose that vision, people perish. And you talked about having vision for your business and what it is that you want to build. How do you create a compelling vision that's going to attract the right kind of people to your business to allow you to achieve the things that you want to achieve? Um, you have to understand people, right? And 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 just first thing though, you have to you have to fix yourself before you can help anybody else. And I think that's one of the big things that I've worked on a lot is really understanding who I am, how I tick, what makes me tick, what you know, what drives me. So I mean, I've had to fix myself, and I talked a lot about it at Rocket X, and and a lot of times as you get it gets in your own way. So you know, fixing me is the most important thing, getting me back to who I am and back to my core and my core values. Uh, it was really important, right? But yeah, the, the vision thing, man, is you have to understand what people want, right? And people want to be part of something special, mm -hmm. right? Like if they had a choice of A and B, something that's real comfortable and they're going to get along or something where they have an opportunity, a level A opportunity to earn a lot of money, do, do something cool and just do something that doesn't, hasn't been done, something exciting. People want to be part of that. So you build that, right? And I always say you build it, they will come, right? And I've had conversations with guys are like, well, we're not ready. I said, well, I'll tell you right now, this is ground level. And the guys that are on the ground level with me that jump in day one, they're going to have the opportunity. They're always going to have more opportunity than the guys decided to wait and have but one foot in or have cold feet and it came later. Who do you think is going to get more taken care of, right? So you have an opportunity and I'm telling you, I'm not going to fail. If you come trust me right now and come ride with me and do this with me, I'm going to take care of you and your family. I guarantee that and you're going to have more opportunities than the guys that didn't want to trust me. And guess what? They're all going to come. At the end of the day, I will own Dallas. This will be the biggest company in Dallas, and I don't give a fuck if I'm not private equity or whatever. I'm coming. And I, like I said, we have we're very very educated. We're very, we understand what we're doing. We're very calculated. But I sold these guys on. I'm selling them on the vision because that that's where we're going. And, and if you don't believe in it, like if I talk when I talk, and I'm talking with very much sincerity. I'll tell you that much right now. Like I have no no hesitation in what I'm saying right now. Well, it, it sounds like it. there is zero hesitation within it, but in, and it really goes into the higher why, right? And like, that's what, where people want. And so when you have your vision, when you have your why, when it's true to you and it's true to the company, now people feel better because they're part of something that's bigger than themselves.
Yeah, and you know, also just so you know, there's a lot of people that are probably watching this, and I've heard a lot of what you guys said, and I'm telling you right now, you sh- you're gonna you're gonna eat your words pretty quick, dude. I'm telling you right fucking now. Some of the shit I'm hearing, oh my god, like you're just digging yourself a bigger hole. So if you're watching this, you better shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> there's that confidence. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, we're very you well got- capitalized, so don't worry about it. You got your biggest supporter in your corner here. There you go. Yep. Well, but she yeah, also man. no. Let's just say this. She she also said finally you put you you guys put a snack on the podcast. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but yeah, man. Obviously, we can jump into some other stuff. But I mean, kind of some of the stuff we just did in the last week, man. And and we've documented a lot of it, right? So I partnered up with Fast Response like about ten days ago. Uh, boots on the ground last Tuesday, and just keep in mind we had no no Google presence, no Yelp, no website. Uh, we had like no trucks. So we had. We were only running like home warranty calls. We didn't have any technicians that have ever ran a, a retail call before. Um, I mean, we've, we've, we had no mascot. We, our truck wraps weren't very good. Like there was just a lot of things that we've had to do and we've done all of it in seven days. Like we're ready to roll. Like I got and shout out got, to Mike for uh, learning how to build a website in two days. <laughs> Do my brother build a website in two days? Uh, you know, my entire team's come in. Obviously, Michelle's coming in. Obviously, putting all the reporting and finance side, all that stuff in place. Um, you know, we got. I went and hired. You know, some great guys in the market that I know the market well, so they're you know they're helping with me with some recruiting. Uh, we're building out a giant training facility. So like in the next, that there's no there's nothing there right now. <laughs> And in, in nine days, I'm going to have an entire training facility built out, live equipment. I got a stage. I got a, a nine foot by 18 foot LED wall going in, all new says, all live equipment set up. And we're actually starting our first training class. Uh, so we're going to be doing full training from scratch. So I just, I've already hired, I think we hired like 10 trainees that are going to go through that have never done HVAC before. We're going to put them through a training course. And we already have that all documented in the blueprint. So it's already something we've already had built out. Obviously having the prof, uh, having the, the business blueprint has allowed us to scale everything quicker. Everybody knows all of our SOPs, our positional agreements, exactly what their job is. There's training videos. So we're already excelling and getting these guys up to speed really fast. All the onboarding, all the stuff that we built in there over the last couple of years. And I told people like, I think four years ago, I'm going to build an encyclopedia for HVAC. And that's what we did with the blueprint. I built something where it's like you have every freaking tool at your at your disposal to make it happen. So I mean, we got all presentation books. We got like, dude, we already are going to look like a hundred million dollar business overnight because we already have the cheat codes to make it happen. Well, and that's what I love when you put out that post. Uh, was it yesterday, two days ago? That like everything you're doing is just in the blueprint. Just follow what it is that's been laid out, and it's there for you. The resources are there, and that's where a lot of businesses they don't fail because of a lack of resources. They fail because of a lack of resourcefulness. And implement, implement the access is there. Right? It's a, it's a revolver Correct. effect, right? How long does it take you to pull the trigger on shit? And a lot of people are just so scared to pull the trigger. Like I said, it goes back to the limited beliefs, right? Uh, but one thing that we're working on right now, and and we're, we'll talk a little bit about the rebrand of the blueprint, what we're going to be doing, and and all that stuff, but. We're really working on documentizing everything you need to go from zero to 5 million, from five to 10, 10 to 20, and, and so on and so forth. And it's going to have like a fucking, literally a form, like do this. Here's your fucking, here's your manual, fucker. Like you get it, just go do this. And this is what we're working on. So we're, we're really laying out all that stuff from our tech stack to different marketing that we use. Like obviously at zero to 5 million, you got to be really scrappy, really resourceful. Okay. These are the gorilla marketing things you can do and all this stuff that I'm really implementing in there to get this thing off the ground to help people grow faster because my, my, my whole purpose is helping that little guy. Right. And I've helped guys go from nothing, man, to multi-million dollar businesses overnight. And it's either the people that follow what I teach and things that we do are scaling like crazy. I mean, we're talking 10, 20, 30, 40 X year over year. Some of these companies are fucking going crazy, but it's the guys that want to implement and take action. Right. And, and I know it's hard sometimes, and so we're just really putting a lot of stuff in place that are going to make it, we're going to be the best tool for, for contractors to grow, period. Like there, there's not going to be a better training organization on the planet. And some of the things that the deal that we made today, we'll talk about in just a couple of minutes, is going to put us in position to dominate the entire training space from sales, operations, finance, call center, everything. And we're putting together a just an amazing team of people. Uh, we're very, very, very well capitalized. And we're going to grow without this thing to where we're going to be able to support the staff, support our customers better than any training organization on the planet. And that's what we put together. And we'll talk about a little bit more about that as we go through the podcast. Sure. I'd love to get into the the blueprint as well as the uh, the announcement that we have because we've teased that out a little bit. But uh, we got to get to our random question generator first because that's a natural good segue into it. And so you're familiar with how it works. We uh, give you the choice of door one, two, or three. You don't get to know what's behind the door. You just get to choose. But the random question generator, of course, is brought to you by On Purpose Media. We will get you on the first on the first search results page, even if your grandma types the search wrong uh so there we go uh i uh do you want question one 
two, or three? I'll do number three. Um, for my three kids. For your three kids. All right. Uh, what's your favorite holiday and why? Uh, it's simple. Halloween, man. I'm a, I'm a Halloween baby. I'm a Scorpio, October 28th. As you guys know, the first couple years of Profit Rocket, I always put it. Actually, no one really knew they were just coming to Victor's birthday party. Uh, <laughs> and so you came I, out as the Yeah, uh, so that's, that the, that yeah year, year one was literally my birthday, dude. So like it was my thing. Yep. It was my 23rd or 33rd birthday, 32nd birthday, whatever it was. But it was, yeah, you guys, you guys, I just usually just pay. You guys have to pay for my birthday party. So that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> but I, I love Halloween, man. I love the energy. I love the party. I love dressing up. Obviously, like you know, my whole, you know, I, I'm known for partying. Like that's what I'm good at. So, and that's, you know, that's something that you know, people say all these things. I'm like, nah, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm trying to melt, well, cut that back. I'm not as crazy as I was a couple years ago, but yeah, I just enjoy it, man. It's fun. You get to have a good time. You get to go, you know, be someone that you don't, you're not normally get to be. And I don't know. I just like the whole vibe of a Halloween. And I just love that it's around my birthday. So uh, that would, that'd be easily my, my favorite holiday. And I don't got to spend a bajillion dollars on presents for everybody. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> even better, even better presents in the form of alcohol. So uh, <laughs> I love Love that. Uh, and and I, se- secretly, I'm kind of like, I know that you really love Halloween. I was kind of glad that I didn't have to dress up at the last event. Uh. You, you know what? <laughs> well, you know, was, you, you were there. I mean, Drake Drake bought out the whole concert. So, you know, I'm surprised you got in. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing that with Rick Ross performing of an audience of like, whatever, like, dude, it's a private event. Like, it, yeah. 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 yeah so it, was pretty, it was pretty funny, man. Yeah. But no, TMZ. Dude, the, the, right. the event was fun, man. I know, like, it was hard because it was, it's in the, it was in the spring, right? And like, and that was the hard thing because I wanted to throw the event again, like, pretty quickly. But I also realized I'm like, dude, everybody's broke during the spring. So, like, it was like a lot of people were just like, fuck, I can't even, like, they bought tickets to the event, but they didn't have fucking flight. They couldn't afford the flights and hotels to get out there. So, like, I was trying to help out as many people people as I can, but you know, we, we had some amazing sponsors. That's really what made it happen. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just glad that I'm done with the big event thing and, and we'll, and, and keep in mind, like we're still doing events. We're doing weekly events or we're doing monthly events with a new training organization. We're doing stuff, but it's not going to be, you know, freaking trying to get a thousand, 2000 people somewhere and all this crazy stuff. It just doesn't make sense. And, you know, and, and I, I, that was, I think that a lot of that building, that was a lot of ego driven. And I'm just like, that's not what I'm about. I wanted, I just wanted to build something. And if you're at the event, like we really gave granular stuff that people could use and, and implement in their business. And that's what I've, it's always been about. And that's what I've always been about trying to get as many people not knowledge as possible. Right. So, uh, I think that's what we're going to be able to do. And, and we have a great partner in zero that's going to be, you know, helping take over the events and help us put it on. And we're going to be out in New York at the Google headquarters in, in October. Uh, so it's going to be, it's going to be awesome, but we're really changing up the event, how we do things. It's really going to be more granular. It's going to be really owner centric and really tight, tighter groups. So we're just going to be able to implement some, some amazing things. And, and yeah, just, uh, we've created some great partnerships that are going to allow us to do that and take all, take the stress off my back of having to plan and do all the event. Now Vic can just do what I'm good at, which is promoting and showing up and giving people a good time and, and making sure that they leave with some value. Yeah, well, and as long as you're still it's, throwing the parties, we're good. Right? Oh, you know yeah. I'm throwing the parties. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm, I've been throwing parties since yeah. and, and been throwing parties, you know. So that's, but, you that's, are, but you're real and like big events. Like I've been to a few in terms of the agency space and what we do and there's big ones and then there's small, inter, yeah, small intimate ones. When you have those small intimate ones, you actually build better connections and you actually get to solve more problems in my opinion because now you're building these intimate connections. And like, I remember one of the, the, the things that I liked the most about um, the end of the event and walking through the hallway when you had – uh, there was two breaker rooms. I think it was uh, one was Gene Slade and the other one, uh, Sean Michael Crane. They just had seats around out in the hallway, right? And having the conversation like that was cool because now you see this intimate setting that's there with a circle, having a conversation to be able to solve problems because guess what? Everybody has a problem. And when you can build this intimacy, you can talk about it. And now it actually helps other people. It's just great. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely key, man. So, I mean, obviously the events are going to live on in, in a different form. And, and the, the deal that we struck today is going to be a real different form. Like, uh, we'll, we'll talk. I mean, we can jump into it whenever you guys want on that as well. But I think, say, I think, I, nah, I think it's a little, nah, little, little too exciting little for everybody too. right now. I nah, think we'll we gotta wait. wait, wait, uh, wait. We gotta wait. Yeah, gotta, gotta, gotta keep those view counts up. <laughs> uh, what else you guys got? Where's the questions? How, at, man? how good is Victor at edging? Let, let's let's see that. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm gonna leave that for you. I, I left California for that. I ain't doing all that. I don't know. That, that sounds fucking weird, dude. I ain't doing that. You, you can do the edging. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I want to try. <laughs> I do love you, Jess. Yes, Gene, I do. So, uh, thanks for the shout out. So, 
uh it's actually funny once i told gene that i i uh, at one point after a call I, I even said on the phone to gene i'm like I, you know what i don't actually really like you gene but I it, it was after you. the last podcast it was after had. the last <laughs> podcast i don't like i don't like you but i do respect you and so now he's obviously he's earning back the like uh you know, and so, it, so we talked yeah. about that too like i mean obviously me and gene had our past man and, and uh, i actually just had a conversation me and michelle were talking about it and, and just you know I, I truly believe that he, you know, he's, he's grown just like I have. Right. And, and everybody always has this, this pre preconceived notion about someone, but it's like, that's the old, that that's not even that person no more. Like everybody has their past. Everybody has, does stupid shit in their life. And, and it's how, it's how you change and how you react and, and who you, who you, who you end up being. Right. Like, and I think, you know, I think he's one of those people that I'm really, you know, I've not, you know, me and him and I had a lot of conversations, we spoke at a couple of events now and, you know, and I, and I hear a lot of his clients are doing really well as far as our, you know, the training and all that stuff. So uh, I think it's one of those things you got to, you got to really, you got to really judge the person by who they are now, not who they, who you think they were, who well, people told you they well, were. And, and, and seasons of life. Who seasons they play of life. on the internet. Yeah, and who they play on the internet is not who they are. No, man, it, it, it's not. And it's like I said. It's at the end of the day, man. You you got to you got to make your own judgment, and you know, and people can make their judgment about me, and they don't like me. I don't really at this point. I don't really care. I, I built my own fucking tribe, and the people that fuck with me, fuck with me, and the people that are with me right now, I tell you right now, I'm gonna make them very, very successful. So that's been that's been what's what, what my driving force is, anyways. Well, you bring people up, right? And and it's the seasons of life, and that's what I what I look at is okay. Everybody has a different season. Everybody adapts. Everybody changes. And like, I'm guilty of this too. Every single person is guilty of being some old version of themselves. When you look at that old version of yourself and trying to redefine, and maybe you just don't give a fuck. You're like, I don't really care. Whatever. I'm not going to win you over. Are there certain people that you've looked at in the past from having led with the ego, from burning some of those bridges to being able to try to repair those? And how have you went about repairing that? You know, there's some that I really want to reach out to. Like one of them, like I, I created this, I don't even know, maybe it was in my own head and like, you know, he might, he might be watching it or might not, but I haven't reached out to him. Like one guy's like Tom Howard, right? Like I really respect everything that he does. And, you know, me and him had our beefs and with the fetch attack and summit thing. And, it was always, it was just like, you know, we're competitors and, you know, you hear things, it's hard things back and forth. And that's one of the guys I want to definitely want to fix my relationship with. Um, there's a couple other people like, man, I just like, you know, I feel like we're, we're, we're past that point. Like, I feel like, you know, we're all doing cool shit. Like I'm so focused on my stuff and my, and my team and my tribe. Like I, I, I try not to talk negative about people. Um, you know, the last, this last week has been funny. Just some of the people that pretend to be your friend and then you hear the stuff you're saying, I'm like, first off, I'm not even, you're not even a thought in my mind, but mm -hmm. when stuff like that comes up, I'm just like, man, like, come on, bro. Like that's so childish. You're talking about Victor from fucking 20, 20 fucking, you know, from, I don't know, four years ago or three years ago. I'm like, that's what you're really, you're talking about. That means you're, either you're scared of me or, you know, mostly a lot of these people, I, I call them smile fuckers because they'll smile to your face and fuck you in the ass. And that's how I, I just, I, I just can't stand that shit, man. Just either be real. Don't, don't come and talk to me. Don't be fake to me in my face and then go say shit behind my back. Like I'll tell you straight to your face. I don't like you. And that's why you do it. <laughs> Just Is that like you just telling Thad right now that you don't like? He him? looks like a smile fucker right there. Look at him. <laughs> no, no. Um, I'll at least give you the courtesy of a retro. Uh, yeah, no, but, you know. I, here, smell this. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, geez. Anyways, we're getting a little off topic. Uh, profit record blueprint, uh, business blueprint, blueprint. That's a tough one to say for me after some Texas whi whiskey. Uh, there you go. See Gene Slade. He says F you that. So you can say fuck Gene. It's okay. Um, looking at the profit rocket business blueprint, iteration upon iteration, adaptation about adaptation, putting those things in there and in really leveraging that. I think one of the biggest things that I think a lot of people miss on is, hey, I got this blueprint. Well, now what? Um, you know, like there, there's a lot that goes into that. Walk us through how somebody can take the, the, everything that's in there. And like you said, different stages, different tracks, et cetera, to make sure they actually stay on pace for it. Yeah. And that's, and that's one of the big things that we're, we're working with is through this new partnership with profit rocket is really helping having a better implementation team, right? Like, you know, we, we've been, you know, if you really look at profit rocket as a toll, we, we really bootstrap this entire thing. And I don't think you'll realize how much money it costs to like, obviously throw events. So events been our biggest burn rate, right? That burns a lot of our cash flow. Uh, you know, we lost, you know, millions of dollars on events over the last couple of years, which, you know, it sucks. And I don't know about anybody that likes to lose millions of dollars, but uh, that's not what I'm into anymore. Right. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, you know, that's really helped. That's really handcuffed us from really building out, you know, the implementation team that we really need to as, as an organization. And that's part of the reason why we stopped, we're stopping to do the events because we want to put our cash flow into what the most important part is, which is, you know, serving our clients and, and taking care of them. 
Uh, but that's what we're, that's where my brother works on. So my, this is my brother's baby on the back end, and we're really burning, building that learning that learning path, right? Like, hey, where do you start? Because right now, if you look at the blueprint, it's a it's a fire hose, dude. It's a fire hose of information, and then you get the fire hose, and you're like, where do you start? You get you get overwhelmed, and then you you know just like anything like that, when you get overwhelmed, you just kind of give up. Uh, so we're, what Michael's been working with, and what my team's been working with, is really burning, building a learning path, and, and we're saying, hey, let's start here, and then once you get to here, then go here, then go here, then go here, and that's what the blueprint it's all kind of leaning into at this point um and like i said we're, we're we i mean we've got everything from every sop job description you know positional agreements pay plans like all kinds of different things we i mean we have installed like it's it's fucking nuts dude like if i had this when i started my business it would be a cheat code period even if like now if you have a business right now and you bought that i guarantee you there's something in there that will just change your business if you want to implement it uh, you know, obviously the back end stuff, like the op side and all the stuff that Michelle does, uh, if you implement that, your business is going to change your life from our reports that we do and all these things that you don't really think about as an operator. Cause most people were, you know, they were, you know, they had an entrepreneur seizure and they were, you know, they were, they were sales tech and all of a sudden one day they run a business and now they're like, fuck, why can't I make money? And a lot of people are sometimes just too scared to implement that stuff. So one of the things that we're building right now is really being able to go compete with the biggest training organizations in the country. And, and I, I wholeheartedly think that we are going to be one of the largest training organizations in, in the entire industry within the next three to six months uh, with the stuff that we're building out. Uh, but yeah, so implementation, obviously having a learning path, making sure that we're, we're getting our customers to follow, follow through check-ins, uh, all those stuff. And we do weekly coaching calls and all that. So it, it is a lot. It is, it is a fire hose. And, and we also, you know, we're working on building a package just for startups and all those things are like just to make it easy on people because if you get overwhelmed then it's really it's just it's already this job's already hard you know running an hvac business you know, there's a reason why statistically 95 percent of businesses fail within the first five years and it's like 97 98 after the first 10 mm -hmm. so you have a fucking what five percent chance of getting it right and being good at this and, and really succeeding and there's so many failures there's so many more failures than there are successes and and our job is to try to mitigate those. And a lot of times the reason those successes don't happen is because they are, you know, they, they're going the shiny object. They're going after this and everybody's trying to take their money from them. So we made the blueprint really affordable. Like, you know, you're, it, we made it so affordable that anybody can afford it and we're not going to break the bank and really hurt your cash flow of your business. So we're going to allow you to continue to scale. But there's so many training organizations, so many people out there that are just price gouging the shit out of people. And if you really look at our, what we offer compared to everybody else, the price point is there and our, the stuff that we put inside there is, is next level. It's not even close. I don't care what training organization you look at. We have better stuff than almost every single one of them because I've been in part of almost all of them. And I know what we have in there is gold. Um, so I really wanted to bring a product that could help, help, help companies grow. Uh, but also not break the bank and not really hurt those companies, right? Because I, at the end of the day, I'm here to help people. And that's what I've always been about. And the people that know me know that's what I am to my core. I would give my shirt off my back to anybody. And that's what the blueprint is, man. I, I'm, I'm going to supercharge your business. I'm going to freaking get you to the point where, you know, you can, you can run a business and make money. And that's what it's all about. Well, and, and uh, yeah. two things. I was going to say, even when it's a thousand dollar shirt, the Texas medley rips off your back. Well, Texas medley, he did come through and hook me up with that new shirt. Uh, which I, I was kind of pissed. Michelle just sent me a link the other day, and it was yesterday. It was on fucking on sale for six hundred bucks. I'm like, damn it! I could, <laughs> they got me good. But I still now, don't know why I would have a heart attack spending thousand dollars on a shirt, even though I could. I just wouldn't want to. Uh, uh, did you look? Did you see how sexual I looked in that thing? I look highly sexual. So I mean, if you look, if you look good, you feel good, you play good, you get paid good, right? So yeah, actually, that, that that is true. That is true. If you do look good, you do like yeah, I, I used to. That, I used to show up at university wearing a suit and a tie, and everybody's like, "What the fuck, you wearing a well, suit and tie?" I, well, well, I, went, good, in, I went to the store, and Michelle wanted to go to the store because that's where she gets all her dresses every year and it's called Balmain and they're very expensive like fuck I have a pair of jeans and then it's like 2500 bucks right uh, but they're very expensive but I'm like I went in there I'm like no we're not going in there we gotta hurry up it was like the day before the event and I'm like and I go in there she goes there looking at the dresses as she's looking at the dresses I end up walking out with a shirt and she ends up walking out with nothing so uh, yeah moral of the story just stay out of the fight stay away from South Coast Plaza if you ever come to California but yeah <laughs> Fair. Um, so in terms of the, uh, like, there's two things. So one of the business stats, and you mentioned that, um, the other part that I think a lot of people also miss out on is if you do have a business, 95% of businesses never go over a million dollars in revenue and only 1% of businesses ever go over $10 million in revenue. And so there's also something that's, that's a careful thing on there too. And I always just like to point this out, like you're growing the, you're going to grow this massive beast of a hundred million dollars per year. Not everybody also should strive for that because it's all about what you want to. And it's just, I always like to make that caveat in there, you, but when you, I, but the other, go ahead. Yeah, no, so. the other part is the scare to implement. And I think this is where people might be scared to be able to hit that, that number. All right. They might be just, 
scared of it, right? They say, hey, you know what? I can never run a 10 million or 20 million or $30 million free business. I'm actually scared to implement all the things that are that are designed to be able to get me there. Why do you think that people are scared to implement? Um, you know, people know what they know, right? And I think that's one thing I talk about, like going out to other shops and seeing what other people do. Because I truly believe you can't do something you haven't seen done before. And so I don't even, obviously, you know, there's a lot of invention in the world that have happened, right? But they all came down from a, a need for something and filled it in, right? But a lot of times business owners, they, they don't see, they don't see how these big organizations run. They don't see like the ins and outs of it. And when you don't see that, it's really hard to do. Like I came from service champions, which, you know, I think they're on sale for like only four, three or 4 billion or something right now. So if you're interested, they are for sale. Um, but like, you know, I came from <laughs> a massive, man, man. I came from a massive organization that was like, you know, I got to see the ins and outs of how a really good business runs. And, and I got to see the ins and outs of other business, like other multi-million dollar businesses, you know, and, and I think that's one of the biggest things that I've done is I've been able to go and see all these other shops and see what they do. And once you see it, you can believe it. And once you can believe it, you can achieve it. And that's how I, that's how I, I go about it. So I, I highly suggest that's why the events are important to me. Like a lot of people don't realize like, you know, the events are fun and exciting, but the big thing is just getting around people that have done big shit. Like when I, when I started going to events in 2019, the first time is when I really changed you know, my mindset on things that were possible. Or when Ken Goodrich took me to the Super Bowl in 2020, I'm like, you can own a fucking private jet having AC company. Company, let's go like this is badass i didn't know this was possible right so these things that you don't know are possible and then you find out they are and you're like well if he can do it i can do it and i can tell you guys right now i'm not special right like i, I work my ass off and if you really see me when i am working it's like it it's a real i'm a relentless motherfucker when i'm on my shit so like i work my ass off but i'm no special person man i just know that at what i want i know who I, where i want to go and then i just go execute it and i and i don't i don't allow people to get in my way and it's just, it's just it's either either in or you're out or you're in the way, and that's in and I, I that's how I operate. So I think that the biggest thing is just getting people to see see what's possible. Now I don't suggest it because you know if I if I circle back right like yeah maybe I could have grown slower right and and one thing that I thought you have to you have to trade you have to trade you know time for money right and and the time that I did trade wasn't you know it does kind of suck, right? Like I wish I could get those years back with my kids that I was grinding in a freaking service truck running 16 hours a day, but I wanted to get where I wanted to go and I wanted to go fast. Right. And even, even when I was a technician, like I moved up faster than anybody in that company ever. I broke all their company records. I went like, I would did it as fast as I could. And I, it's something that I've continued to do on everything that I've ever done in my life is I, I don't, I don't, I go all in and I, and I go make shit happen. So, um, I just don't think it's for everybody. I think some people are good. You know, there's, there's, there, you want to build an enterprise or you want to build a lifestyle business. And some people want that lifestyle business where they can, you know, they can work hard all summer, go chill in the winter, go hang out with their family, go on, go on boats, go on holiday and do all that stuff. So I think that, I think that's something that I would, uh, you, you have to make that decision. I think that's a conversation you got to have with yourself and be true to yourself and truly what you want because this isn't for everybody. Right. And I, even my partner out here in, 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 uh, in, in Texas, right. Like, you know, we partnered with me and I don't, I don't think he understood. Like Michelle was joking. Like you should put that something in the contract. Like, Hey, this shit's about to go faster than I ever thought. Like you better fucking saddle up. And, and I don't think it, if people are really ready for when I come in. It's like, it's like, Holy fuck. Like this guy doesn't stop. No, well, and, but not, and that's, no. uh, you, you mentioned the shiny objects thing, right? Like a lot of people look at what you've done in the last 10 days and it's really easy to think, oh, you're just attracted to all these shiny objects right now. Like what's the difference between you right now and the decisions that you're making right now versus the Vic of four years ago when you went and bought that business and it ended up being 3.2 down the hole. Well, the, the big, the biggest difference is right now. And if you guys are seeing what I'm doing, I'm really positioning myself to really only have focus on certain areas. And you know, you guys are seeing like all the other acquisitions, but we've actually strategically put a team together and put all the stuff in place where I have it now. Right. I mean, my team's been wasting their time planning events for years when they're really, really good at fucking implementing in businesses. Right. So I'm like, we're not doing this anymore. Let's go take all the talent, all the things that we have and, and put these things in place. So I think that's something that's allowed to happen. But like, if you're really looking at, and we talk about the thing that now I'm going to announce in a little bit, it's really freeing up my time. And it's really actually narrowing down to where my focus is and putting those, you know, putting like a horse blinders on. Right. And so I can just go build businesses because if I really just do that, I don't know anybody that can build a business as fast or as good or, and do the things that I can do. So, but I have always had, you know, I've always had shiny object syndrome and I, and that's something that I'm really getting checked on. You know, Michelle checks me and my team's checking me and, and I, I owe it to people to, to really focus on this one. And I got a lot of people's lives that are depending on me and being successful in this business. And I, and I put that above myself at all times, but I will not fail. I will have a successful business and everybody that's with me is going to be very successful as well. It looks like Willie Ward wants you to build his. He's got uh, five bucks for you. So 
You know, Willie, get a get a contractor's license and we can talk, big dog. <laughs> I mean, I you, you keep talking about it, just do it, dude. Like, you know, at the end right. of the day, like you can't you can't talk about it unless you want to be about it. Well, that's a secure timber plan, right? Um, that's that's the big thing. So, um, should we get into the announcement? Yeah, we can, man. It's I mean, it's it's nothing crazy. I mean, you guys have seen some of the posts that are going on, and it's it's something that like fuck, I you know, I almost did this with another person, and and just the 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 team that we put together to make this happen, and why like I'm like, dude, this is gonna be awesome, is because I know who's behind it. I know I know what's uh what 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 what's gonna happen. I know what's possible, and I know that it's going to impact a lot of people's lives. We are going to change more people's lives than we've, we've ever had the opportunity to, and it's just exciting. So I guess we can, we can kind of jump into it. So you guys probably saw me today. Um, I was, I've been out in Texas, right? I think it's like almost like, like I, I should have been in Texas a long time ago. This is so much more opportunity for me here just because like no one really wants to come to California. Uh, obviously taxes. All the Californians are moving to Texas. Well, like no one wants to come out there for training. They want to, like, it's really, it's hard for people to get out there. It's expensive. And it's just a lot of things that really kind of tied into it. So, you know, uh, about a week ago and, and, and keep in mind, this is something that's been in our, in my mind and kind of pushing forward for a while, but it just kind of all the pieces fell together. Uh, so we've decided, uh, you know, we're, we're actually, you know, profit rocket is, is going to be you know, rebranding. Uh, we've created a partnership with a training organization called apex, and we're actually going to be calling, turning, uh, building out what's called the Apex Lear uh, Learning Institute. And we're going to be going into multiple different verticals, obviously starting with HVAC. And we're really going to push into that. So all the Profit Rocket stuff is now going to become Apex. Uh, one of the key factors was obviously being able to train and, up and get these teams up to speed really fast. And I was able to convince one of my best friends, Tom, to move from Vegas and move out to Dallas and really just, uh, build our team out. Uh, from there, we've got about 50 new sales reps. Um, we're about to run about, you know, three, four, five, you know, thousand dollars a day. I mean, probably a thousand dollars a day to start on Facebook ads to really start pumping this thing out there. And then we're really building the entire ecosystem around how do we take care of these customers and scale them? So, you know, as we start first, we'll be, we'll be in the blueprint. We'll everybody getting on the blueprint. We have a, amazing partnerships that we have from the tech stacks that we use, uh, all the things that we use uh, in our businesses. I'm a bunch of uh, rebates and buying power that, you know, I don't think any other organization even has, like even the big ones don't have some of the deals that we're working out right now. Um, and then from there, you know, obviously really building out their monthly, weekly training. So like, we're going to have multiple trainings all year round. We're going to have, we're going to have technical training. We're going to have uh, sales training. We're going to have service training. Uh, we're going to have finance training, call center, um, obviously marketing training. So we're going to have different uh, different workshops consistently throughout the entire year. Uh, we are going to be hiring on trainers. They're going to be joining, going to on-sites all over the country. Uh, so, you know, people can have us come out and do the training and the implementation. And, and now we have a, an amazing team. And what they, with, uh, with us and Apex combined, uh, Ryan's team has been, they've been building a training organization forever. They get to be kind of the back end to it. And obviously I'm the brain behind all the implementation, all the stuff that goes into it. Me and Michelle are really still, me and Michelle and Mike are still really going to be like involved as far as like how the things are laid out and how it's done and how it's taught and all that. We're really going to teach our trainers to teach our processes. Uh, but I, I think we're going to scale faster than any training organization you've ever seen. Uh, first is going to HVAC. We're going to, we have, we are bringing in some of the best experts in different trades. So we got, we got roofing, we got door to door. We have all these things that are coming in. They're all going to be rolled into apex and we're going to be rolling that out. Like, very fast. Like we're already in the process of rebranding all the profit rocket right now. So the blueprint will be rebranded. All the new products that we've, we've been working on are going to be into the blueprint really quickly. And I think that, you know, we're going to be probably having 200 person events every single month um, over and over and over. And I think that's, that's really what's going to happen. We're building this beautiful training facility out here for the technical training as well. Uh, so we're going to have, we're have everything from install, install training, uh, service call training, all that stuff is going to be here as well uh, to get your technicians and stuff up to speed. Uh, I really feel like the the trades and a lot of the a lot of the training has really dropped the ball and really held back the trades for a long time. Uh, we have some amazing people that are coming in to make this happen, and it's it's, it's like I, I keep posting right. A, te a team is going to get you where you want to go faster, right? Uh, so with this team, we're going to be building this out, and I see my my partner Sean and Sean Pollard is one of the main reasons I'm you know doing this, and he was he was uh, Andy Elliott's right hand guy. He helped build Andy Elliott's whole training company from the freaking garage to you know hundred million dollars. Um, but his big thing is operations and putting things in place and checks and balances and making sure the customers are taken care of and satisfied and all that stuff. And so when he came over to start working with Ryan is really, really opened up this conversation. And, and, you know, obviously when you get to someone like Ryan and someone like me, we both got big egos and you're like, oh, well, I, I can do it myself and I can do it myself. But it really, we, when we just really laid it out and I showed Ryan what we had, he realized we had an amazing product and he saw my vision and what we could make happen. It, it was just kind of destined to make it happen, especially with my move to Dallas. So uh, we are putting those two things together. Uh, Apex 
Tech uh, Learning Institute is going to be live pretty quickly. And we're going to have a very affordable, amazing training program for people all over the country that really want to grow their businesses. And we're also going to do a special one just for startups. If you want to start up a business, uh, we're going to have an option for that. You call in, I'm going to build a special package. If you never started a business, I'm going to show you everything you need to start the business from how to set up your LLC to everything. And then I'm also going to give you a special one year, one year pricing on it to help you get your business where you want to go quicker. So I think it's going to be amazing. I think we're going to build a great team and, and it's just, I think you guys are going to be really shocked about like how fast this grows. Uh, we do have a plan to be three to 5 million in the next uh, three to 5 million a month within the next three months. Um, as far as what we're going to be doing in that organization. No, I love it. And I mean, a lot of what you're, what you're talking about, even in terms of like a brand new business getting started, you're putting on YouTube for free based on what you're doing at fast response, which I love as well. Cause a lot of people talk about, you know, I wish that I could have been a fly on the wall when Bezos was building Amazon. Yeah. Right. Or Steve jobs was building Apple and, and you, you, you weren't able to see that it wasn't documented the way that this is. So yeah, I'm I mean, really glad that you're doing that. It's, it's really cool. The vlogging stuff and my camera guys, I got freaking five cameras in my face right now. So all this stuff is getting documented and like, in, and it's, it's going to be cool. I think, you know, a lot of people don't really see what goes on behind the scenes and they think like, Oh, it's easier for I'm like, dude, it's stressful. It's tiring. Like my partner has been sleeping in the shop. Like we're working, working crazy hours and, and, uh, and trying to, trying to get it all, get it all put together, but it's, you know, it's, it's tiring, man. It's, 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 it's a lot of work, but you, we, I'm looking at like this and like, and I, and like I said, I'm promising these people across sitting across the table with me that I'm going to build something special for them and their family. And I'm really dedicated to making that happen. And that, and that's what it's really about. Love it. Excited for the big things that are going to come from that. Um, because like it's it, the, the, the total, and I was doing some reading on Ryan Steumann and what he has and what he's built and what he can do um, with Apex. Like it's going to be a phenomenal partnership. Yeah. So and we, we also, we also made a really big partnership with Ciro as well. And I know you guys, you guys understand our Ciro's in-home AI and I analytic company. And, and I'm actually now a, uh, a partner in that business. And I, and I'm actually kind of head of like product development. And I feel like some of our competitors aren't really developing as the way that we are. Like we really at Ciro, we're really trying to build out something special for our clients and we, we really customize it to their business. But now if you're a blueprint member, we've already built the entire blueprint into Ciro. So now, you know, when your guys are in the field, are they following the process? Where are they failing? and that we really can tell exactly where your failure points are in your business and what we can train on. So we're going to use that as an organization, as a training organization. We can actually access your zero. If you're a client of ours, you're using both. We can access it and see where your guys are failing and say, hey, look, you know, Brad, Jim, Jim and Tommy are really having trouble with this objection. You guys want to jump on a call and we can help them go over the, how we can fix that objection or, hey, you know, you got, you got three guys that are just crushing the process and it looks like their numbers are killing it, but I got five guys down here who are not really following along day in and day out and doing the process. You should have them out for our class. So now we can really target and micro target which guys that really need the training and what kind of training they need. And then we can go help those customers. And we're working on the front end stuff with, with uh, Ciro right now where we're analyzing the call centers as they come in, the calls as they come in, analyzing where they dropped the ball and why they didn't book the call and what they should have done differently. So now we can even pinpoint that. And then we can have some call center training, pinpointing those issues as well. Uh, and so it's just, it's just a lot of, you know, obviously the tech stack and how you do things and implement it is really, is really helping. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that I'm implementing in this business is that is implementing Ciro. So day one, I'm going to know everything that's going on inside the field and how we can get better and, and obviously bring in green guys and be able to train them. I'm going to be able to train them in real time and faster and get these things, get these guys up to speed. People don't understand like the technology is out there. If you don't use it, you're going to get ran over. And that's one of the reasons I'm going to be able to scale fast because I'm going to be able to know exactly what's going on, where we're dropping the ball and what we can do to train. And that's why we're building this training facility. We are going to train five days a week. Okay, in five days we can get this thing down and we are going to become the McDonald's of HVAC here in Dallas and we're going to do things the right way over and over and over again. And we're going to continue to make and taking market share that way. No, well, I love that. You got to be able to put out the practice time, right? And that's mm -hmm. something that we talked about in our organization too, is you look at football, how many hours of practice do they spend before they get three hours of a game on a Sunday, well, right? Like it's, it's a ridiculously um, unbalanced amount of time that's spent on practice. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I talk all the time and they're like, well, well, I'm like, dude, I, I was a top producer. Right. And as a top producer, I'm always trying to get better. Right. A lot of times it's the bottom guys. I don't really want to improve, but like, you'd be surprised. Like if I had zero, I would be able to pinpoint where I messed up and I could be, now I can, instead of selling 4 million or 5 million, I could have been selling 7 million by 
making these little tweaks, right? And it's the same thing. Tom Brady, you think Tom Brady doesn't study his game film all the time? Relentlessly, right? And then he trains on the, on his failure points. Hey, what did I mess up on? How do I fix it? And those little tweaks can really push the needle in your business and your organization. And the cool thing I really love about Zero is that like, if I go out there and I run a call and I get it right and I sell the job, it actually get broadcast to the entire company. So they actually, the other guys that are, they can go see what did Victor say in the house that actually helped get the deal done? What was the process? What is he doing to actually be successful? And I think that's something that I'm really excited about as, as well. So like I said, when you guys start seeing our training facility go live in a couple of weeks, a lot of this stuff, we'll, we'll be documenting how we're doing the training, what we're pinpointing, what we're looking for, what we're seeing. And, and hey, you know, our memberships are down, sales are down. Well, none of you guys are offering memberships. And we know that based on zero, right? Or, hey, you know, you know this IAQ is down. Well, no one's offered an air scrubber in freaking a week. Okay, that's probably why we're down. And so we'll be able to train on these things and move the needle way better and way faster than ever before. So if you guys haven't checked it out, you guys need to go to zero.ai and check it out. Uh, it's amazing. We have some special pricing for any of our Profit Rocket or Apex members. Uh, you guys definitely got to check that out as well. Yeah, we got Joe coming on the podcast here in I think, three or four weeks. Um, <clears throat> Former, uh, another former Cutco guy. So I'm excited to, to yeah. chop it up with him. Yeah, Joe's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, he was, he spoke over at at, at, uh, at Rocket X and everything like that. And and he, he they're a solid team. The, the biggest thing, the the reason I really wanted to partner with them is they really do care care about the trades. And they really do want to evolve, you know. And, and me mm -hmm. being able to help with the product development and getting the contractors really what they need to succeed was one of the biggest determining factors in me in me going all in on it. And that's what I'm really excited about is they actually allow me to you know help people and grow. And we've already implemented at Fiscore. We're about to implement it at Fast Response as soon as I get my get enough freaking text in the field, right? Uh, so we're going to have it implemented. We'll show you how it works and we'll show you how it trains. But my guys so far in, at Fiscor are loving it because now they know what they're messing up on. We've already seen like a 25% increase in sales since we went on, we went live about two and a half, almost three months ago. Well, and it's, it's the data points, right? And that's where AI is leveraging to be able to analyze the data points to be able to say, hey, this is where you can actually work on it. I mean, the difference between somebody like a Brent Buckley or, or you know, the top guys that are already doing eight, 10, $12 million per year by themselves is they already know that internally on what they need to analyze because they replay it, they replay it, they replay it, they replay it. Now AI actually gives that tool to everybody. Well, you gotta, you also remember it. And one of the things I talk about and more than anything is compliance, right? Like making sure you guys aren't lying, stealing mm -hmm. and cheating to your customers because I won't fly here. Right. And for me, if I know if my customers now, I know if they're trying to side job me, what they're saying in the house, I know if they're lying, stealing and cheating. And I can really pinpoint those, those failure points in my business before they become legal, before they go to Yelp, before they go to Google and get bad reviews, I can be able to analyze that. And Siri will tell you, Hey, red flag, Vic, something's got going on over here. Like I know that what's going on in the house isn't right. And I can catch it. I can I can identify it. I can fix the problem, move forward. But compliance too. So now if I go, if I'm going to a, you know, I got to go to court against someone. I know exactly what was said in that damn house, right? Like I know the conversation, you know. And that's something that's you know these larger companies. That's why a lot of the big private equity groups are signing up for it too. They're like the training's great, right? Obviously, you know, train anytime you your technicians think you're listening to them or following, them, they magically do a better job no matter what. Even if you're not mm -hmm. listening to it, like if you do a ride along, your numbers go up. Uh, but the big thing is, is is compliance as well, making sure that you're at, cover your ass. One lawsuit cost you more than zero will cost you for the next 10 years right so it's like one of those things that you know you got to really think about cost versus reward my numbers are going to go up my compliance is going to go up and my my lawsuits go down like i'm freaking definitely something i want to do and, and the price point is is stupid stupid cheap it's, it's penny it's literally it's pennies on the dollar uh compared to other products on the market that are, that are doing the same thing and and it's it's one of those things that if you don't do it it's just kind of you're, you're just stepping over dollars to pick up pennies at the end of the day well my understanding of that one the the compared to competitors on the market is it removes the 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 person bias the human bias that exists in reviewing any of those calls that are happening it's yeah. all based on the data and it's the ai scraping it and oh, then yeah. sending it out to the other technicians yeah. to say hey this call went well here's how they handled it this objection you're struggling with it go listen to this dude the, the data points are badass like we were we just had that up at big on a big screen over the apex headquarters and we were looking at it and just the real data points of what's going on with the business what's going on in your calls it is amazing and like i said as we implement and we're working towards implementing the call the front end call Call center side where we're analyzing the calls like who the fuck wants to listen to their call center talk nobody okay so now the ai is going to analyze it and we, we have what's called the you know key points within there so instead of having to go through the whole thing and try to find the issues 
Zero actually highlights the key things where they either did really good or where they did really bad. And we'll be able to actually implement those and be able to target those quickly rather than trying to listen to fucking 100 phone calls a day and see what's going on and analyzing them. Now we know why they didn't book the call, what happened, what's going on here. Uh, and we'll also get to the point where we're actually going to analyze a customer based on how they how they sound, how they talk on the phone. It'll actually pick up their color codes and understand what kind of buyer you're dealing with. So when I, if I'm a sales rep, all of a sudden they, you know, this call, they listen to the call, analyze it. Now it's going to send it into service side and it's, it's connected in there. It's going to send, hey, this customer, this is what they, because a lot of call center reps, they put stupid notes, they don't put the right thing. Well, now it's actually going to tell you, hey, this customer called in for this item. They have this type of personality. This is the type of buyer they are. And when you go into the house, make sure you talk about this. And so now you got power going into the house. Now you got the, now you have the analytics on the back end. And then what we're really working for is our integration with, with RP1 as well. It's where I'm going to take the front end, right? The front end analytics. And when they called in, what happened in the home? And then I'm going to take those data points. Maybe it's say we can even know, I know what type of dog they have with the dog's name, the daughter's name. Now it's going to feed into RP1 AI rehash and AI rehash is actually going to use that against them to try to sell them. Hey, it looks like you're really interested in this thing, blah, blah, blah. And I know little Timmy's room was having airflow issues. Like, well, the techs are going to be able to have that communication with customers via AI and sell you more jobs. Mm, I love that. It's personalization mm -hmm. of messaging, right? right? And that's with when AI. You connect with someone on a human level. Exactly. Right. And the efficiency with AI, it's yeah, game changer. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, man, like there's so many fucking awesome things going on, man. I'm just I'm just excited. I'm excited. Like I already know where the next, you know, six, six months or twelve months is and be like, holy shit, like what we can what we're what we're gonna accomplish and the things that we're gonna be able to do. But yeah, there's the partnership with Apex is something that I'm really excited about, something that we, we, we really put a lot of thought into. It allows me to like big, my big thing is making sure my, I have the focus for my partners and be able to grow their businesses. Right. And also I'm going to be able to still impact the same people and I don't have to have the whole the infrastructure and stress and all the time, like all the stuff I had to deal with. We're trying to run all these different businesses. I'm really narrowing it down to where like this is what we run now. And that's what, uh, yeah, it's like time for the Ferrari faster response time. But yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it's it, at the end of the day, man, we're, we're going to keep chipping away. And, you know, I, I know there's some people that, you know, no matter what I do, they're going to wish that I fail or they're going to hope that I do. And, and for them, I feel sorry for you. Uh, but for the other guys, man, I'm really going to document this thing. So it's going to help. I'm hoping that what I'm doing is motivating you. And a lot of times people are like, why is he posting so much? I'm like, dude, you should see how many messages I get every day. Like, Hey, you got me excited to get up. What can when you, I needed that this morning. I needed this. Like you're pushing me and you're making me make this decision. You're making me to pull the trigger. That's the people that I'm doing it for. I'm not doing it for the people that hate me. Like you, you can't get people to not hate you. Right. At the end of the day, no matter what you do, you can be the best person on the planet. Someone's going to find a reason to hate you. And so if, if you guys are riding with me, you guys are following this thing, man, thank you guys so much. I mean, it means a lot to me. I mean, I know we've done some really cool shit over the last five years. And I know we've impacted a lot of people, uh, but I'm excited to grow. I'm excited to do what we're going to do. So um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at, man. Perfect. Uh, I, I think this is probably a good natural segue to, to uh, wrap things up because we've dropped a lot of information, dropped a lot, a lot of knowledge. I'm excited to see the future in uh, another season of, of Victor Rancor. I mean, we've, We've been watching for since you know, more or less roughly the same time. So um, uh, this might change, but callprofitrocket.com uh, is the URL that they have. Uh, Victor at callprofitrocket.com if you want to reach out to him there. Oh. Hopefully you've got a good marker set up so that you can uh, forward that URL once it changes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll get all that set up. I know, I know some guys I can call. <laughs> yeah, a few people, uh, yeah, a few people and, that might help. And, and, and if you guys, you guys are watching this, man, and you guys, you guys are struggling or anything. Like, even if you are struggling, you don't, you can't really can't afford the blueprint. You can't afford something. Reach out. I'll find out some way to help you out. Um, I'll find a sponsor. There's things like that. I've helped a, a lot of companies. That, that if you're really struggling, man, I, I'm not one to really beat you up reach out. If I can help you, I can help you. If I can make you a deal, I'll make you a deal, man. Like I really want to be able to impact as many people as possible. Um, you guys all know that I answer my DMs pretty much 24 hours a day. I don't know how, like I freaking I answer them as quickly as I possibly can. I do answer them myself. Uh, so if you guys reach out to me on Facebook at Victor underscore Rancor or, or, uh, or Victor dot Rancor at Facebook or Instagram, Victor underscore Rancor, uh, I will help you guys as much as I can. And, and, and obviously understand that I am busier than I've ever been in my life right now. Uh, but I have always taken my time to help as many people as I can. So I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. If you guys wanted to reach out to me, uh, if you guys are looking to, you know, partner scale, whatever it is, if you guys are looking for better training, please reach out. I'll get you guys pointing in the right direction. And, you know, maybe it's not that time. Maybe I won't partner with you now, but at least I'll give you some pointers of things you can do uh, to get you where the point where you want to do that. So uh, that, you know, that, or Evan and Thad, thank you guys so much for having me on. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. I, I I hope I don't know if I came off like an ass. Like I just sometimes I don't know how I come off to people, but I hope that people got something out of this podcast and and it motivates them to go step up and do some big shit because you know you only got one life and one opportunity, so you got to make some shit happen. Well, as Eminem said, you got one shot. Uh, <laughs> good song about that. So. Uh... <laughs> 
Anyways, we do have one final question though for you, Victor. Yes, sir. Okay, what is one question in Victor 7.0, you know, Victor 2024? What is one question that you wish people would ask you more but don't? One question I wish they would ask me more, but they don't. Um, um, I think that I think one question I wish they would ask me more is is probably like, like maybe my like you know why why do I do it right? And a lot of people are just like they they see it and or like I don't know maybe more like hey Vic what like what are the things that what's something you would implement today? Like you know a lot of people just like ask me like what have you done? I'm like well, no it's not what I've done. It's like hey what what would you do today if I was this size right? If they ask me that question, I can usually give them good pointers. A lot of times, you know, these bigger guys, these big companies, they don't know how to break it down to the little guy. And I think that's one of the things I've always been able to do is I can, I can connect with the little guy all the way to the big guy and everything in between. So maybe if you do reach out to me to ask me, like, what would you do if you're in this position? Really get granular with it so that it, it make, gives me – I can respond faster, right? So I can cut down on the time that I'm spending on the thing. But get to that, the question. I'm really I'm really direct. So be direct with me. Say, hey, Vic, if you're me, this is what I got going on. What would you do? And and I can really narrow down and I, pretty much at your size of what I would do in that situation. And I think that would speed up a lot of my conversations online. <laughs> But it, it makes a ton of sense because like the, the, the problems and the struggles that somebody has that let's say zero to one, one to five, five to 10, 10 to 20 are completely different in Dude, like, so, like I was on right? stage and I, I think I was with, I was with, uh, it was a profit rocket in Vegas. It was, it was a, it was a, it was a rhino podcast and it was me, Yano, Tommy and Anish and, and obviously Tommy and Anish had built these amazing big businesses, but dude, they were fucking way over these people head. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, Hey, Tommy Ish, like chill out. Let's reverse. Let's understand. I know your audience like they're like go hire a cfo and do this and i'm like dude these guys can't these guys got fucking two trucks let's talk right. to these guys like this right so there's there's different stages of the business and different stages of life and i think that's one thing i've always done is like i can i can i can build my stuff around any any size from the small to big and i've done it all so much in such a short period of time that i can i'm pretty good at really answering and like what i can something that fix those issues but uh that that would be my thing man just really be direct with me but also like hey Ask me what you do at my size. Not like, hey, Vic, how'd you do it? Hey, I'm here. What can I do? And it makes it makes it a lot easier to answer those questions. Perfect. Well, so, you, so you got AI Vic coming on the rehash side. When's AI Vic coming on the coaching side? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I, you know, I think that on the coaching side, there's always going to have to be that personal side, right? And I think that there's there is some stuff. So even in like if you have zero, we actually built in there where you can ask ask. It says, it's it's uh, Victor AI in there, so you can ask it any objection, anything. What would you do if this customer said this inside the Zero app? With any technician that has it, can ask, and it'll give you exactly what I would say for every objection, how to overcome it, what I would do, how to prevent it. All that stuff is in there and analyzed, so you can do it within hmm. seconds. You can put it into Zero and, and get an answer back on what Victor would do in that situation. Wow. And then they put it in the earbud and it spits it out, and they just have to to listen. Yeah. And yeah, it, it analyzes their voice and it speaks for them. It's pretty cool. Right there, you go. Uh, they just have to they have to lip sync it. So, yeah. uh, Victor, I'll be the first to say, hey, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah. uh, you're doing some amazing things down in Dallas. I'm looking forward to watching the rocket ship continue to go. It's been an absolute treat. Um, thanks for coming on and thanks for and uh, one last thing. If you us. guys, if you guys are interested in Zero, if you do sign up for a demo and you do a demo, you will get a free ticket to our event in New York, New York in October. If you do sign up for Zero, if you sign up for the, I think it's five licenses or more. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll actually pay for your flight, your hotel, and your ticket to the event, and you guys can come out at no cost on us uh, to help you guys obviously subsidize some of that cost. So. Uh, love you guys. Thank you guys for coming on. Keep doing what you guys are doing. The podcast is awesome. I know you guys got some great listeners and I know a lot of people got a lot of great stuff out of, out of your podcast. So keep it up. I know it's a lot of work and, uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and let's, let's go out there and crush it, man. Let's, let's go crush this summer. Everybody. Appreciate Wicked. you, Vic. I'll and until next time. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's a wrap on another episode of HVAC Success Secrets Revealed. Before you go, two quick things. First off, join our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash HVAC Revealed. The other thing, if you took one tiny bit of information out of this show, no matter how big, no matter how small, all we ask is for you to introduce this to one person in your contacts list. That's it. That's all. One person. So they, too, can unleash the ultimate HVAC business. Until next time, cheers.